Welcome or welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Katie. I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by K. Scott. On my channel, I love to bring you guys along with me as I take found and thrifted pieces of furniture that are worn out or just plain outdated and bring them new life. I recently received the most beautiful PR package from Fusion's new milk paint line, and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to not only update a sad little end table that I've had caking around the house for a few years, but also bring you guys along and go over some of the basics of milk paint. True milk paints come in a powdered form. It's a mix of milk proteins, chalk, limestone, and natural pigments, and it's really easy to use. This milk paint by Fusion is just add water and go. To start this project out, of course, we need a clean slate. I gave this poor dusty little table a really good wipe down with a TSP alternative to remove any dirt and also any oily residue that might be on there from furniture polishes over the years. There was a chunk of inlay missing here on the top so I filled that in with a little DAP wood filler and let it dry. I still want this table to show its age and character marks, so I'm not going to go too crazy on trying to smooth things out. I just want to fill in this giant hole. Once it was dry, I sanded the filler smooth with a 220 grit sanding sponge, and then I continued over the rest of the table to scuff things up. Again, nothing crazy here, just a quick once over to dull the shiny surface. Now it's time to mix up my paint. I'm gonna use this gorgeous creamy taupe color called Almond Latte. The rule of thumb for regular painting is to mix a one-to-one -one ratio, one part water and one part paint powder. The dry powder is completely shelf stable and will last forever, so it's a good idea to only mix up small quantities of paint, just enough for what you'll need for your project. This 30 gram sample size bag is just enough for a small project like this table. You need to mix this really well for a few minutes to combine all the pigments. You'll see little streaks of different colors around the container and that is completely normal and just a part of milk paint. Don't stress out about it. Your milk paint should be the consistency of a table cream. Milk paint bonds really well to surfaces all by itself, but it's known to chip or crackle sort of randomly when it's applied over a previous finish. Since I want my table to be solid and not chip or crackle at all, I'm going to mix in some of Fusion's bonding agent. This acts as sort of a primer that ensures the milk paint won't do anything funky and I'll get a nice smooth, sleek finish. If you want some chipping or crackling, you just skip this stuff and cross your fingers. Because milk paint is a lot thinner than most other furniture paints, the first coat or even two, especially with a light color over something dark like this, can look a little scary. You also want to be really careful to go back around your piece a few times before you walk away and check for any drips. If you catch them before they're dry, they will brush out really easily. This is what my first coat looks like. See, it's scary. I should also mention here that most milk paint needs to be refrigerated between coats and only lasts for a day or two once it's mixed, but this Fusion brand doesn't require that. I just covered my paint really well and set it aside. Because there are no extra additives in milk paint to emulsify it, you want to make sure that you give it a really good stir up when you're getting ready to apply each coat, even mid coat sometimes because the pigments are heavy and tend to settle towards the bottom.
After I had the second coat applied, it was still pretty transparent, so I decided to add the rest of the milk paint powder in my sample pouch into the paint that I'd already mixed up. There was only about a tablespoon left, but that was enough to thicken things up and get me a really nice opaque finish. The great thing about milk paint is you can always make adjustments to the consistency by adding more paint powder or more water. Super simple. Because of the minerals in milk paint, it can have a sandy or gritty feel once it's dry. I used a super fine sanding pad to go over all of the flat surfaces and smooth everything out. Just like chalk paint, milk paint is porous, so it benefits from being sealed. I used Fusion's hemp oil for this. Hemp oil is extremely easy to apply. You brush it on, let it soak into the paint for a few minutes, and then wipe away any excess. The hemp oil absorbs down into the paint and hardens as it cures to provide a water resistant, wipeable, strong finish that also richens the color. You could totally jazz things up at this point with some antiquing wax or glaze to highlight the details, but I prefer a more simple look. Let's take one more look at the table when I started and what it looks like now. My life was great till you added colors Like the moon needs the sun, we don't care about the others You said my I'm super pleased with how this table came together. It's got a fresh new coat of paint, but it still shows some of the character marks that make it unique and one of a kind. I'm excited to sneak it back in beside the couch. It's the perfect spot to put my own almond latte. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Make sure that you leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below and tap that subscribe button if you haven't done it already. And I will catch you guys next time.